So uh, my presentation today is So this is this uh, slide just uh, for the outline of the presentation. I'll be introducing uh, the filipotomy in sandflies. Uh, slides, the uh, slides of the external morphology of filipotomy sandflies and life cycle. Also on the behavior of the adult filipotomy sandflies and uh, the distribution of filipotomy sandflies and some behaviors in selected uh, uh, literature, published literature and uh, the collection methods uh, that are used in the surveillance of filipotomy sand flies. So here, this slide shows you the disease vectors, the insects that transmit diseases, and this is the filipotomy sand fly, and the one uh, in the circled is the actual site. So where is the filipotomy sand fly in the uh, classification? So it belongs to the Deptra, the order Deptra, they are flies. The family is Psychodidae. The subfamily is Philipotomenae. So in this subfamily, there are three genera. There's the Philipotomus uh, species, which is found in the old world, our region. Uh, and uh, this is the vector that transmits Leishmaniasis. The second one is the Lodzomia, sorry, the second one is the Lodzomia, which is the species found in the New World tropics, mostly the forested areas of the Central and South America, in the Americas, that's why it's called the New World. The Sergentomia species are found in the Old World, but few species bite people and so are not uh, known to be vectors. The medical importance, as already mentioned, that is uh, transmit, it transmits mainly the disease, the Leishmaniasis, but it does cause annoyance. So in sensitized people, the sandfly bites can be very uh, uh, burning, itching. They cause uh, severe irritations. And there is a name of it called Harara, burning itch in the Middle East. Uh, the Leishmaniasis, as I already mentioned, and Dr. Supriya has also uh, presented in her, in her presentation. And also sandflies can transmit as uh, seven viral serotypes responsible for sandfly fevers, uh, also called uh, papitisai fever or three-day fever or philipotomous fever. Uh, this slide just shows you the life cycle in the in the in the disease uh, in the leishmaniasis and the transmission of leishmaniasis. So we have two cycles: a cycle in the human, and the cycle in the uh, in the vector. So why does the sandfly? Uh, uh, bite to the female sandfly, bite to obtain the blood. Just like the mosquito to develop the eggs. It needs blood for the development of its eggs. So it uh, bites a human. And then when it, when it bites, if it is infected and contains the promastigoid stage of the Lishmania species, it injects this promastigoid stage inside the human. The promastigoid stage is a phagotide, a phagocytose, a phagocytose by the macrophages, these develop into amastogoids. They are released, and these are now the infective stage. The amastogoids are the infective stage to the uh, philipotomy sandfly. So when it comes to bite again, it has the uh, it, uh, it injects the blood. It uh, sorry, it um, sucks up the blood containing the amastogoids, which then transform into the promastogoids and go to the probo and migrate to the proboscis where it is infective now. So the morphology, the external morphology of the philipotomy sand flies, we have I, in, on the left side, on the right side, there's two photos, two images of the philipotomy sand fly. So they are small, you can see it's much smaller than the mosquito, slender bodies, and they have hair, they are hairy appearance. The hair is on the head, the thorax, the wings, the abdomen, they have long hairs all over and they're, and it's, uh, it's presumed that because of this hair and its tiny uh, size, they are unnoticed when they bite. So they can inflict multiple bites. Uh, and then the head, the head contains large black eyes and the antenna, the antenna is long. It's speed like segments and it also has uh, short hairs, but it is similar in both sexes. We, so we cannot differentiate between male and female like mosquitoes using the antenna. We differentiate through the uh, the um, the end here, the end of the abdomen. 
In the male, there's a claw-like uh, structure known as claspers. So this is the male on the top. And the female, the tip of the abdomen is rounded. So it, it, this we call, this is identified as the female. Then the, we look at the mouth parts. The mouth parts are also short. They're short. They're not like the mosquito where it's long and it purses and penetrates. These mouth parts are adapted to cut skin, the female uh, philopotamy sandfly. It cuts the skin and the blood, uh, it cre creates a pool of blood and then sucks the blood. So they are pool feeders. The thorax is humped. So it's, it's a humpback with one pair of wings. And these wings are... Uh, lanceolate in shape, that means they are tapering at the end, and they have slender, sl stilt-like legs, long slender legs. So just to show you, to differentiate bet between the philopotamy sandfly and other insects that may look like it. So for the, for the uh, right left side, we have the sandfly at the bottom, and we have an insect called the drainfly, also a psychodinae, and we notice here the difference in the wing. So the wing of the philopotomy sandfly is lancelet. That means it's tapering at the end and it is more slender and it has the long legs. While the drain fly is short, its wings are different, more rounded at the, t at the t end and it is broader and short legs. On the, le on the right side, we have the mosquito at the bottom and the sandfly at the top. So we see it's really small, the sandfly and uh, their wings are different also. So when the sandfly is not flying, its uh, wings are usually erect and in a V-shaped. The life cycle of the, the sandfly, it does have eggs and it has larval stages, larval stage and it has a pupil stage. So the egg uh, is laid as dark and elliptical but it is not laid in water like mosquitoes. It is laid in, in uh, areas uh, like where there is high humidity. For example, in, uh, among the litter uh, where it's uh, decaying uh, organic food to, for, the, for the larval stage to feed. And it, so it needs moisture and the temperature it needs to be uh, suitable for it to develop. So under optimal conditions, uh, the egg will hatch in one to two weeks. We look at the we look at the larva. The larva is a, a small and caterpillar-like. It has a well-developed head capsule, numerous brush-like setae, and long caudal setae at the end, uh, which are nearly as long as the body. So the development of the larva is uh, 18 days, but can be prolonged when the months are during the cold winter, into months when it's uh, winter or high temp or cold weather. So in the, we look at the mature larvae, which is the fourth larval in star. It, is, it has thick bristles, which are feathered stems at the end and enlarged. And these are known as matchstick hairs. So this is the diagnostic feature to differentiate between the philopotomy and sandflies and other uh, sandflies. And the pupil, uh, the pupil stage uh, develops after the last uh, mature larva, after the fourth stage of the lava. And the life cycle usually takes 28 to 100 days, but this depends again on the temperature uh, and availability of food. So some be the behavior, we have feeding behavior. So both males and females feed on sugar sources, uh, such as uh, plant juices, fallen fruits, but only females take blood for their ovarian development, for their egg development. The female has relatively short mouths, as I already mentioned, and they cannot bite through uh, clothing. So the mouth parts, uh, they consist of a number of structures. The mandibles are the ones that cut uh, the, the skin and they produce a pool of blood. A pool of blood is produced, which is sucked. So they are known as pool feeders. The female sandfly sucks uh, for, uh, blood from man and, uh, and animals uh, and uh, a few species of birds. So many philobotomy species bite people. So they are known as anthropophilic, human loving, or anthropophagic. They usually bite from dusk and nocturnal uh, biting. So similar to uh, uh, mosquitoes, they bite in the night usually, but sometimes can bite during the day when the females are disturbed in dark resting sites. And most species are exophagic. That means they bite outside, but a few are endophagic. 
So this birdsel, Philippotomy sandflies, possesses a short hopping flight. So when you see a sandfly, if you have seen a, a, a Philippotomy sandfly, you think it's hopping, but actually it's not hopping. It's just weak flies. They fly for a bit and they stop. So generally they do not disperse more than a few hundred meters, but can move up to two kilometers over a period of several nights. Resting behavior, sandflies rest during the day in dark, humid, sheltered sites, like inside houses. So species that commonly rest in houses are known as endophilic before or after feeding. So they rest, rest either after or before feeding um, and are often referred to as domestic or peri-domestic uh, species. In temperate areas of the old world, sandflies are seasonal in their appearance and adults occur only in the summer months. In the tropical areas, some species appear to be common throughout the year, but in other species, there may be well-marked changes in the abundance of adults related to the dry and wet seasons. So this is just showing you the distribution of the sandfly vectors, the disease and the sandfly vectors. So as already mentioned, uh, leishmaniasis, there's cutaneous leishmaniasis and the, there's visceral leishmaniasis. And there's anthropognathic cutaneous leishmaniasis, which is usually transmitted by the philopotomy surgenti in many of the, in, in the, uh, the countries. And then we have the zoonotic cutaneous leishmaniasis, which is uh, transmitted usually by the uh, philopotomous papid side. We also have the visceral leishmaniasis, and this is usually the uh, orientalis, philopotomous orientalis, in the high burden countries uh, such as Sudan. And again, this just lists the, the, the vectors, the known vectors, and the, the, the uh, leishmaniasis species that is transmitted, and the forms of the disease. So just some adult behavior, uh, which is selected in published literature from the Eastern Mediterranean region. So for uh, there are studies that have been conducted over the years and still being conducted uh, in published literature. So for the uh, study that was conducted in Iraq, uh, we have uh, the Philippotomus alexandrae and the pa Philippotomus papetsai were the most abundant species. And they were, uh, the Alexandr they were abundant from April to October. However, Philippotomus alexandrae was uh, mainly peaked in April to May, and the papid site was in August and September. And there was active early, the study also conducted uh, the, uh, the activity, the peak, which is there was active early in the evening. They were active early in the evening during the cooler months, but more active in the middle of the night during the hotter months. And the Alexandra was reported to be exophilic. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, the, the vectors uh, were also, uh, the spe these species were endophilic and anthropophilic. And for Philippotomus surgenti, it was mainly exophilic. In Sudan, uh, two studies were, were conducted, a recent study in 2020, which showed that uh, Philippotomus orientalis was exophilic and exophagic. Uh, but uh, it, it's also anthropo uh, uh, conducted in by Al Aqib. And uh, there was a review in the mi Middle East and North Africa where it showed that Philopotamus sergentai was endophilic. However, this Philopotamus sergentai is usually found to be exophilic. Uh, that was also identified in Pakistan. And the papet site is usually found to be endophilic. And seasonal patterns are, they peak in July to August. So just some quickly going, to, well, I'll go through some collection methods that are used in the uh, surveillance of Philippotomy sandflies. So we can either direct, direct searching, do direct searching using uh, a torch and uh, some uh, and aspirators. And this we search, in the, we search, we can search in the houses, inside houses, animal shelters, animal burrows, uh, in, uh, in caves uh, and other uh, sites such as rock creases, cracks in the walls and, and wells. So we just need this torch and aspirators, uh, oral or mechanical. And these aspirators can be used for capturing large numbers of sandflies. We can also use the pyrethrum spray catches, which is used also for mosquitoes. Uh, and uh, these, uh, we can also use traps such as sticky traps which are either A4 pa papers, 
uh, using uh, castor oil or other mineral oil, uh, which catches, traps the, most, the sand flies as they are flying. We can also use CDC light traps using ultraviolet uh, light, which is usually more effective, more effective when compared with the incandescent light. There are other uh, traps which are attractive, and we can also use the collection bottle rotator, which was presented during the ADs um, session. And this is CDC light trap fitted with rotating platform that holds an array of eight trap reservoirs. So this is just images of the kinds of traps that we can use. We can also use the UV tray trap at the bottom. And this uh, also can be coated with the mineral oil and the BG Sentinel trap can be used to, uh, to capture the sand flies. The insect the insept, uh, traps, which are the sticky paper, and these are can be hanged either on the walls or in the outside in the ground, and uh, these can intercept and, and trap the um, the filobotamine sand sandfly. And you see here on this paper, it's the filobotamine sand sandfly is stuck on the paper, and then they remove it, and then we can conduct further investigations. Of course, the uh, morphological identification and other investigations for uh, incriminating and uh, uh, identifying the blood meal source. So then these are the references and thank you very much.